In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to write a public health research paper. In public health, we look at a disease entity in terms of the population. However, in clinical study, we look at a disease entity in terms of an individual. And that is why a public health research study is a special kind of study different from every other type of studies. A research is a process of systematic search for verifiable truths about a problem phenomenon. Hence, this systematic search requires developing a systematically organized approach, which is called the research protocol. The research protocol of a public health research paper includes the introduction, the literature review, the methodology, the results, and finally the discussion, conclusion, and recommendation. In the chapter 1 of a public health research paper, we have the introduction. The introduction is a summary of every aspect of the study. Introduction to the entire part of the protocol. The introduction has a summary of the literature review. The introduction also has ingredients to drive the methodology. And the introduction has something to do with the expected results also. However, there are six aspects under the introduction. First of all, we have the background to the study and scope. The background to the study provides emergence and characterization of the problem phenomenon. It tells us the story of how the problem started and the opportunity of characterizing the problem phenomenon. All this revolves around the epidemiological issues. In characterizing the problem phenomenon, we use epidemiological principles which tells us how the problem started and the magnitude of the problem phenomenon. Secondly, under the introduction, we have the statement of the problem. This describes the situation creating risks or challenge to normal convention, raising the question why and how about the problem phenomenon, and these are critical to identifying the problem to be addressed. And thirdly, we have the research questions. Imagine from the characterization of the problem phenomenon are pertinent research questions. These are the questions the study needs to address in order to halt the progression of the problem phenomenon or to eliminate it completely. Fourthly, under the introduction, we have the objectives of the study. After setting out research questions, you need to set out objectives. The statement of objective maps out the course of action. The objective will map out the course of action to resolve the research question raised, which is operationalized by specific objectives. This means that in a public health research paper, you have a general objective and specific objectives. Next, we have the research hypothesis. The research hypothesis is a statement of conjecture of what the research proposes as an explanation of the relationship between the dependent and independent variable, usually in the alternative hypothesis. The research hypothesis is the researcher's plausible proposed explanation of the dynamics of the problem phenomenon. There are different types of hypotheses, however, the null hypothesis and research hypothesis are the two major hypotheses. Finally, under the introduction section, we have the justification for the study. The last part of chapter 1 is the justification for undertaking the study. Two important considerations are done here. First, establish the rationale. What is the reason for the study? How big and important is the reason for carrying out the study? For this, just one paragraph is enough. The second justification is the contribution of your study. What type of contribution would the new approach make which has not been done before? This has to be done to know the significance of your study. This also can be done in just one paragraph. Therefore, the justification for your study includes the reason and how important that study is. And this is done in two paragraphs. List out the significance of the study because they will be talked about in the discussion section. In chapter 2, we have the literature review. The literature review needs to be organized to adequately articulate the important themes of the problem phenomenon. Under the literature review, we have the introduction and background issue related to the emergence of the problem of the study. To develop this, use the narrative of the background to the study and problem statement to begin this review. This should be summarized in not more than 200 words. In a public health research paper, the literature review should include an epidemiological review. To develop this, scope the magnitude of the problem phenomenon with its outcome and identify the at risk population systematically within the global region, defining the phenomenon as a global problem. The literature review should also include a theoretical review. The theoretical review is the contextualization of the problem phenomenon within the behavioral models that identify the important antecedents 
and would structure possible elucidation of the dynamics of the problem phenomenon. This section provides the science of the study and links directly with the epidemiological outcomes, providing explanation of the likely basis of the problem phenomenon. The next review under the literature review is the conceptual review. This section contextualizes the problem phenomenon within the public health domain of the level of prevention, facilitating identification of the diagnosis of the level of prevention of the problem, similarly as in the theoretical review. The last review under the literature review is the empirical review. This section should provide sound empirical evidences for the epidemiological, theoretical and conceptual narratives. Secondly, facilitating the confirmation of the areas that gap exist, requiring attention in the study. As scoping review, it would apply systematic review method with critical appraisal of the empirical studies, from observational studies, experimental studies, interventional studies, and reviews to make its point in support of the gaps identified. And finally, under the literature review, you can include a conceptual framework that is related to the subject and theme of the study. An example of a conceptual framework is the ABC conceptual framework, where A stands for antecedents, B stands for behavior, and C stands for consequences or outcome. Chapter 3 of the research paper contains the methodology. In developing the methodology, you need to give details about first the study design. The study design should say if the study is an intervention, and details the intervention protocol should future. Other details under the methodology are the population and the study site the sample size and the sampling technique for the study, the variables and hypothesis testing procedures, information about the instrument used for the study, validity and reliability of the instrument standardization procedures, data collection for the study, ethical issues involved in the study, data analysis, and the data analysis procedures of the study. In Chapter 4 of the Protocol of a Public Health Research Study, we have the results. In developing the results, First, you need to include a short introduction of the study. A reader going through your study at this level might have forgotten the purpose of the research study, so it is important to include a short introduction at this point. Secondly, in the results, include the frequency distribution and summaries of the descriptive statistics of the variables. Next, include the results of the hypothesis tested. And finally, include other results that were gotten in the process of the research study. In Chapter 5, we have the discussion, conclusion, and recommendation. In developing the discussion, include a short introduction to review the purpose of conducting the study. Secondly, give a discussion regarding the outcome of the study guided by the research questions. Thirdly, include the implications of the findings in the study in the context of the literature reviewed. Also, under the discussion, give details of the distinct contributions of the study to the body of knowledge. And after the discussion, we have the conclusion. The study comes to an end with a conclusion. The conclusion must be derived from the findings and not the researcher's perspective or personal opinion, but the data derived because the data is speaking at this time. The best way to conclude is to present the summary of the implications of the research hypothesis in the context of the problem phenomenon. And finally, we have the recommendation. In the course of the implementation of the study, there may have been certain constraints or limitations encountered. The researchers will articulate strategies to overcome this in a future study. Also, findings from the study that have important application related to the problem phenomenon may be presented as recommendation for practice. This protocol is the gold standard in writing a public health research paper. And a reference should be included after this protocol. A recommended referencing style is the upper style 7th edition. If this was helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.